In the first 11 days of September, Russians launched more than 400 Shahed attack drones into Ukraine. But the Ukrainian armed forces are fighting back by changing their tactics to combat the growing Shahed threat. According to Forbes, the frequency of drone attacks is growing. In August, there were almost 800, which is the highest figure this year. At the same time, the Russians are changing the nature of drone attacks to make them more effective. In defiance of all the Russians' ploys to use the Shaheds, Ukraine has come up with an innovative system to detect them. A multitude of network microphones mounted on poles throughout the country listen to the sound of the Shaheds engine, and a central air defense system compares the microphone data to track the route of each drone and calculate its likely target. Mobile air defense teams then move into position to intercept the Shaheds, receiving data via tablet. Tablets. The publication noted that since most of the front lines are men, some of these mobile teams are made up of female volunteers. However, journalists noted that in recent months, enemy drones have begun flying at high altitudes and descending only in front of their targets. Drones have changed their tactics and are flying over Ukraine at an altitude of 2 kilometers and often 4 to 5 kilometers. This is done to avoid being hit by mobile fire groups, analyst Sergei Flash noted on the Telegram channel. The publication noted that Ukraine is saving Patriot and Iris missiles for ballistic missiles rather than drones, which has forced it to change tactics. In particular, the Air Force has become a key player in the fight against drones. Journalists noted that videos show Ukrainian helicopters shooting down Shaheds and this now appears to be a standard tactic. High-flying drones are detected by air defense radar and the Mi-8 helicopter can fly alongside while the gunner fires at it with a machine gun. Mi-24 helicopters are also used for this purpose, shooting down drones with a 23mm cannon. The tactic has proven successful. The August report indicated that the kill rate of Shahids has increased to 91% in the last six months, compared to 80% in the previous six months, the publication says. At the same time, alternative methods of combating these drones also work, even when they are not shot down. Recently, there has been an increase in the number of Shahids that have gone astray and do not hit not only their targets, but also the country they were launched into, the journalists noted. The Shahed-136 type of attack drone are an Iranian development. Russia initially imported ready-made drones from Iran. Later, parts of the drones were supplied by Iran and assembled in Russia. Now they are produced under license at a giant plant in Alabuga. The Shahed-136 has a distinctive sound which gave it the nickname Moped. Ukraine's Deputy Defense Minister, Lieutenant General Ivan Havriliuk, has stated that the targets of ATACMS ballistic missiles include not only Russian military airfields. In an article for Interfax Ukraine, he noted that while discussions were underway with partners about lifting restrictions on the use of long-range weapons, the Russians moved their aircraft further inland beyond the range of ATACMS. This has led some in the West to doubt the effectiveness of their use. Havriliuk stressed that ATACMS can strike not only Russian military airfields, but also arsenals, bases and warehouses. Thus, the Russians would supply less weapons, ammunition and equipment to the front lines in Ukraine. Even the biggest and fiercest bears are afraid of fire. The rabid Russian bear will be stopped by the powerful fire of the defense forces of Ukraine. We need to add firepower. Many of our partners are aware that the scale of the Russian offensive requires a greater supply of weapons to the Ukrainians. At the same time, we urge our partners to urgently help speed up the development and increase the volume of production of missiles, long-range drones, robotic complexes, EW systems and other weapons at Ukrainian enterprises. And we also offer allies to buy weapons for the armed forces from Ukrainian manufacturers. A better armed Ukrainian army will quickly motivate Russia until the end of the war, he said. The answer to the question millions of Ukrainians ask, when will the war end? is simple. It will end when Russia can no longer continue it. This depends primarily on the Ukrainian soldiers and strong decisions from our allies. Ukraine has the right to defend itself, but we do not have enough weapons to repel the Kremlin's troops. Therefore, we are forced to remain on the defensive. That is why we emphasize the need for more resources, not just for defense, the Deputy Defense Minister emphasized. Havriliuk also noted that Kiev is encouraging its allies to purchase weapons from armed forces of Ukraine from Ukrainian manufacturers. 
At the same time, we are urgently asking our partners to help speed up the development and increase the production of missiles, long-range drones, robotic systems, electronic warfare systems, and other weapons at Ukrainian enterprises. He added, 